right, welcome to the Chaz Palmetary Show on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Google. If you want to check it out you, while you're working out one day, you don't feel like watching on YouTube, put it in your headset, jog, do whatever you like. We have a lot of fun here. We, I like to uh, talk about a lot of different things. A lot of things that interest me and I hope interest you. Uh, don't forget, you want to come and see my one-man show. We just had a sold-out show. Uh, where were we? Where were we, John? I just, I, I was just in... Um... So on June 4th, you're going to oh, be... Oh, wait a minute. That's right. June 4th. June 4th, we're going to the Richfield Playhouse. The Richfield Playhouse in Richfield, Connecticut. Uh, it's a great show. You got to come and see it. Uh, then June 11th, I'm going to be back at the Paramount Theater. The Paramount Theater in Huntington, New York. I'm there at least, I don't know, three or four times a year. It's a great place. If you've never been to the Foundation Room, you got to go there. Great food. It's a great speakeasy downstairs. It's a great uh, date. Take your date to come and see the show, then go downstairs and enjoy the Foundation Room. And then uh, June 23rd. June 23rd. I'm going to be in Dover, Delaware, right? At the Rollins Theater. At the Rollins Theater. In Dover, Delaware. I think that's a casino, in fact, if I'm not mistaken. At the Rollins Theater, in the casino there. So, and so many dates uh, I have, but I'm only going to give you the next three. Uh, go to chargepalmetary.net. You'll see all my dates for the rest of the year. Always check, because new dates come in all the time. Uh, chargepalmetary.net takes you everywhere. You can buy the card. The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. You can buy... The merchandise, uh, the photos, now you just can't leave. It's, it's amazing. I keep saying that. People keep wanting to hear that saying. I don't know. It's incredible. I get on a plane, and they shut the door, and the pilot goes, now you just can't leave. Every time I get on a plane, you believe this? It, uh, it's crazy. Uh, you also could do a one-on-one -on -one with me if you'd like to speak to me. One-on-one. -on -one. You can go to Also... I'm doing my master class in June. That's right, June 7th, 8th, and 9th. I'm doing my master class on how to audition. You can get in touch with one on one. That's 27 West 34th Street. We will put up the number right there. One on one uh, on the 7th, 8th, and 9th of June. You get to work with me one on one on how to audition. You know what they say? You cannot get the part unless you know how to audition. Am I right, John? You're right. Can't do it. I don't care how great you are. Many great actors I know, they can't audition. They just can't. They don't know how. So what are we going to talk about today? You know, I'm getting up there in my age, you know. Everybody knows how old I am. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, approaching those big numbers, you know, 60, 70 coming up here. Longevity. <clears throat> how could you stay alive longer, but staying alive long is not really the thing, you know? It's the quality of your life. You don't want to be 85 years old being wheeled around and you can't even talk, you can't get up, you can't speak, your back hurts. Who wants to live like that? The quality of your life. You know, it's funny. Every Saturday, I teach a private class just to my friends. And we all grew up, we're all the same age. No, you know, it's free. I just teach it with them. And we talk about longevity. And I started doing this about eh, two months ago, I think. Uh, and I said, you know what? You know, because I'm out of all the guys, I think I work out probably the most of them because obviously I have an agenda. I have to do the show. I have to stay in good shape. Uh, and all of them, I said, look, we're going to start off. I want you guys to dead hang. People don't realize how important a dead hang is. You know, just just hang. You don't have to do no no pull-ups. Just hang. It's called a dead hang. What that does, and and always say, please go on Google, look it up. I'm not a doctor, but look it up. It's an amazing thing to do because it builds all the strength in your arms. And they say. I, I mean, I, I do a lot of reading about this. That grip strength is a definite 
uh, it's a definite way to predict your longevity. I'm telling you. Because without grip strength, that says a lot about your inner workings. If you can't grip things, you can't like you open up a jaw or your hands hurt from arthritis. Here's what you got to do. I made the guys do this. And again, this is advice from professionals. I am not a nutritionist. I am not, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not a physical therapist, but I do work out a lot and I do speak to physical therapists and I do speak to a lot of people who are way smarter than me and I take their advice and I pass it on to you. And I say, I had one of my friends, he's a doctor, in fact, uh, not a medical doctor, he's a PhD doctor. And he was having trouble with his uh, hands. And I said, to start hanging, I said, even if it's 10 seconds, doesn't matter. You start building it up, maybe you could build it up to 30 seconds. But I, I sent him these things where you squeeze. Is one of them over there, John? I think, yeah, one of them is, yeah. It's a thing like this, right here, see? Squeeze it. I said, you squeeze that 10 times a day, 20 times a day. And he's been doing it. The, hand, the pain in his hands, gone. He said it was like he went to Lord's. He can't believe it. The pain in his hand, gone. Just by doing this, I, said, I bought him two of them. I said, you put one in your car and one at home. While you're driving, you're on a 20-minute ride or even a long ride, just squeeze it 20 times. Build it, keep building it up. The ones I sent them, you could actually make them harder. And I'm telling you, all these guys have been calling me, saying it's a miracle. They have no more pain in their hands. They feel much better. Their, their whole body is standing up better. Because you know when you get older, when you get older, you start to hunch. You ever see the older people, they hunch. And that's because the weight, the gravity just pulls them down their spine but when you, when you hang, a dead hang with your hands, the weight of your legs pulls your lower lumbar. And it's an automatic stretch. Some, I have the thing where you could hang on your upside down. I do both, upside down and dead hang. But most people uh, don't have that. So just, just hang. You can buy one of those bars on Amazon. It goes into a door. You can buy it on Amazon for like not even $30. It hooks right into the door, no nails, and you just hang on it. I'm telling you guys, and I don't care. I don't care, John, if they're 30, 40, 50. Get up, start doing it right away. I mean, people think, oh, I can't go to the gym. Oh, my God. How could I, I got to go. It takes 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes have changed my friends' lives, literally. I'm telling you, just by doing that, it's a little discipline. What I said to do was get up in the morning, try to take a nice shower, a hot shower, then cold if you can. Some people can, so I, I, I can't force that on somebody. But I take a nice, the shower's hot, and I go cold, 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 and I stay there for three minutes. Then I dead hang. I go downstairs in my gym, and I dead hang. Okay, but for the, and then I do a whole workout with my trainer. But... For people who don't have that time, just dead hang. Now, you'll probably start off 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, and you build it up. I'll give an example. A score, if you could hang for two minutes, a 40-year-old, the score is 100 for, for two minutes with a 40-year-old. So it's not easy, folks. I mean, I've been doing it. And I'm hanging now. The most I hung for an hour and 40 minutes. I cannot break that number. I've been trying, but for some reason, I stay an hour and 40, and then I kind of slip off after that. I'm trying. I'm still trying to get to that two-minute mark. But if you, if you hang for... My friend was hanging for six seconds when he first started. Six seconds, one of them. Then he got up to 10. Then he got up to 20. Now he's at almost 30 seconds. The strength in his hands is building, folks. I mean, in his arms. You know, most people uh, get hurt when they're in the 70s and 80s. And how do they get hurt, John? They fall. 
it, it happens. You hear it a hundred times. They fall, they break their hip, they come debilitated. That's it. There's a proven thing that anybody in their late 70s, 80s, after they break their hip, if they don't take care of it, two years, a year and a half, two years, that's it. That's it. Why? They can't do anything. They end up getting pneumonia and they die. Now, I'm not here to depress you guys. You know, I'm just here to tell you that you don't have 20 minutes, 15 minutes. You don't have that in your lifetime. You don't have that in a day. You get up, you hang, try to do some push-ups. Now, most people at that age, they can't do regular push-ups. You can't. They, I mean, if you can, God bless you. That's great. Do them on your knees. Just do them on your knees. Just do push-ups, 20 push-ups if you can. Okay? You do push-ups and you do 20 squats. Dead hang, 20 push-ups on your knees. Squat as low as you can go. You just do that and you do the horse squat. Go online, look at the horse squat. In other words, you just pull your legs out this way and you, sweat, and you just hold that for a minute. You will be surprised the change in your life if you do that consistently, consistently. I really want you to do that. Let me know how you feel because I'm telling you it will change your life. It really will. Simple things, simple things, eating less, eating less. Look, nobody loves pasta more than me. Oh, my God. I could eat pasta. John, could you eat pasta every day? I love pasta. I could eat pasta every day, twice a day, three times a day. But I don't. I don't. I have it on Sunday. One time, I always have it on Sunday. It's a tradition. Got to have the sauce on Sunday. And I eat. I try to do, like, you know, between a quarter of a pound and a half a pound. <laughs> I don't want to, I used to eat, oh my God, I used to eat a half a pound every time. Some people could eat a pound. I don't know how they do that. But I do a quarter of a pound and I really enjoy it. Uh, and that's it. And that's it. I mean, it's all portions, number one, and intimate fasting. If you haven't heard of intimate fasting, I don't know, maybe you're living under, under a rock or something. The less you eat, the longer you live. I've said it once. You heard me say it on these shows before. I did an old, I did a documentary once. I was talking, to, I was going to old age homes, you know, and I would talk to the people. And I noticed one thing, no fat people. And I don't mean, I'm not shaming anybody. <laughs> Look, if you're heavy, it's hard. And I know that. Uh, no, I don't know that. I can't say I know that because I've, I've never been heavy in my life. But do I have to watch my weight? Absolutely. But if you want to live a long time, eat less. Try intimate fasting. The easiest intimate fasting way is I don't eat until 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't eat anything, and I don't, I, I don't eat from 8 o'clock at night. That's 16 hours. So you're giving your body a rest for 16 hours where there's nothing in it. The insulin goes down. Everything goes down. Everything turns to normal. If you don't, again, I am not a doctor because people go, well, you're not a doctor. You should be giving advice. The only advice I give is the advice that I know that I got from experts. And that is, if you constantly eat, you never give your chance, you never give your body a chance to rest. All you're doing is, is, is burning, burning the fat. You're not burning the insulin. You, that you want it, your insulin to go down. You want your numbers to go down. Give the body a rest. It's like a car. Okay, if you got a car with 50,000 miles on it, you know, that car's going to go to 100,000, 150,000 miles. You got to change the oil all the time. The body's the same thing. It's, it's like your body, your heart, your lungs, they're pistons. You got to keep them, give them a rest. It's a proven fact. They've done it. They've had mice in the lab. They gave 
half the mice, anything, anytime they wanted to eat, there was the food. The other, the other uh, 50% of the mice, what they did was they fed them very carefully, intimate fasting. It was astounding. The mice lived three times longer, four times longer than the other people, than the other mice. <laughs> it was amazing. And I'm telling you, the less you eat, the longer you live. I mean, isn't that good? I mean, right, John? It's true, but you also have to maintain a healthy uh, diet as well. So you do have to eat, but I mean, you just got to watch what you eat. You just got, yes. I mean, if you have to, eat, look, okay, say you want a piece of chocolate cake. All right, so you have it on Sunday. Pick a day that you go, is your cheat day. You have it, you have it that day, that's it. That's it. I Look, everybody goes, oh, come on, Chaz, it's so hard to do that. Yeah, it is hard. But you have to change your idea of what of how to say no. Now, if you just look at the cake and say, well, I can't eat that. It's not good for me. Oh, forget it. You'll never do it. But if you look at the cake and actually make it bigger than what it is, no, make it bigger than what it really is. Say you have children. You want to see your daughter get married? You want to dance with your daughter? You want to see your son get married? You want to walk down the aisle and be there when your kids get married? You have to think of that. Don't think of just, oh, I don't want to eat that because I'll get fat. Eh, that's not enough motivation, folks. You have to make it bigger. It's called you have to substitute. Substitute it. And, you, and you're not lying to yourself. It's the truth. How anybody, anybody could smoke Today, after all the research they have, is beyond me. Is beyond me. I, I, I'm shocked. Have I ever smoked? No. Do I know the feeling of it? It must be really hard. No. Because they say smoking is as bad as... Um, I mean, smoking is... is you're is, essentially killing yourself. You're killing yourself. Quite literally. Literally kill it. And they all say the same thing. It's my only vice. Well, that vice overrides all the rest of them. How anybody could smoke today? Don't you... I mean, who was it? Was it Freud? I, I don't know if it was Freud or Jung who said... It was one of them who said, doing things that hurt you is the purest form of self-hatred. I mean, you got to... How could you smoke? And everybody thinks it's not going to happen to them. And they always talk about the guy who smoked four packs a day who lived to be 104. Yeah, that happens. Well, yeah. it's easy to get addicted. You look at all these opioids out there. I mean, doctors prescribe them for a week and people become addicted for a lifetime. Opioids. I mean, that's a, look, don't start me off on that thing. That's a whole nother thing. I mean, all these people that are getting addicted to drugs and smoking and Hey folks, I'm not. I don't want to preach here. I'm not coming off perfect. Hey, did I? Did I? When I was younger, did I get high? Yeah, absolutely. Did I? Did I take drugs? Yeah, I did. Yeah, when I was younger, I did. I was in a band. I traveled the world, and I got high. But then you got to go. Wait, you know what? Yeah, this is not that good. I was always into my health, and I always felt guilty after I did it. And then finally, one day, I said, "All right, that's it. Enough." And that was it. Enough. And I'm glad I did. But people who smoke and hurt themselves like that, don't be so selfish. Think of your family. Think of your kids. I'm sure there's people out there right now where your kids are telling you, Dad, Mom, you got to stop. You got to stop. And you keep saying, yeah, I will, I will, I will. You know when you stop? You know when you stop? When the doctor walks in and says, hey, we got to look at your lungs here. You got a spot on your lung." Whoa. Then it's like scary. Then the shit hits the fan. Okay? It is not pleasant. Okay? And I'm telling you this. As a person who almost 30 years ago, 30 years ago, I never smoked cigarettes. I never drank. I, I tried to eat good food back then. 
And one day, um, I was getting a massage, and, and, and a woman felt something. She said, you know, I feel something in your neck over here. And I said, what's that? I was just ready to start a new movie. It's 1996, 97. And I'll tell you a little story. And I thought I was invincible. <clears throat> so, and it was a miracle how I got this masseuse who was available at the last minute, who was massaging me. And she said, you know, she put a finger deep in my neck. She goes, I feel a little hardness there, a bump. And I said, wait, and I couldn't even feel it. She put my finger there and I couldn't. So me being a hypochondriac, I went to the doctor. And the doctor said, hmm, I'm going to send you for an MRI. And I'm like, whoa, what's happening here? You know, that, that'll scare the shit out of you. So they do an MRI and they see a growth, a tumor on the base of my tongue. It's pretty small, they said. So they do a biopsy, and it's it's cancer. It was cancer. And I'm like, wow, how could that be? That's impossible. I never smoked. I did research uh, to cut a little bit. I did research on how the hell did I get this. And I found that seven people who I knew who were in bands or were comedians back then all had throat cancer. And the reason why, some of them did smoke, some of them did drink, but some of them did not. Secondhand smoke. Remember those clubs? John? Well, you don't remember, John. You're too young. But back in the 60s, 70s, when you were at clubs, it, it was like a, a cloud of smoke was over the room. Well, like when you got home, when I got home from my gig, I would have to take all my clothes off and jump in the shower because they stunk of smoke. But secondhand smoke is worse or just as bad as regular smoke. Anyway, cut back to the story. I had an incredible doctor uh, in uh, L.A., a brilliant, brilliant doctor, uh, Gerald Burt, Dr. Gerald Burt. He's the head, he was the head of the, at the uh, Cedar sinai I think, uh, at uh, neck, head, head neck, uh, surgery. 48 hours later, I was operated on. They took it out. They said, hey, it's a miracle. It didn't spread. We caught it really early, and it was smaller than I thought, and I didn't need any chemo. It's pretty pretty amazing. But I was scared. I mean, here was I, you know, this big, big shot. They didn't know if I would. I asked them. I said, will I be able to talk after this? They said, we don't know. I said, what do you mean? They said, well, we don't know. We have, until we get in there, we don't know what we have to do. I said, I'm an actor, Doc. How could this be? They said, well, look, we have to tell you the bad news, if it is. They said, I might lose all my teeth. You imagine this? When you hear things like this? It, it, it was like, but you know what? God was with me. My wife... Gianna was with me, my son Dante, my daughter Gabriella wasn't born yet. But I came out, I spoke one word the next day. I said, hello, hello. But it was a rough three months. It was a rough three months. I had to eat through a tube in my stomach. I couldn't eat through um, uh, my mouth. That's how I fed. It was a tube and I would put pour stuff in there. For three months, folks. I couldn't lift a five-pound weight. Okay? And I and to tell you this, not I, I don't want any sympathy from this. Because I'm fine. In fact, six months later, I, I I ended up doing three movies in a row. And they doctor said it was a miracle. It was a miracle. I had one of the most aggressive cancers ever. And never came back, and it was gone. And that was almost 30 years ago. So I tell you this about smoking, about eating bad, and about not taking care of yourself. Because when I was going through the beginning after they operated on me, 
And I would, then I was in the hospital, and I would see my son, who was only at that time 15 months old, walking. My heart was, my heart would break every time I would see him. It would break, and I would cry, because the thought of not seeing him again and my wife, Gianna, again. I mean, my wife, Gianna, she, she's, she's incredible. I mean, uh, God forbid you ever get sick. That's who you want in your corner. She's like an amazing woman. And she knows more about this stuff than the doctors do. So uh, uh, pretty incredible. Uh, and she nursed me back to health. And I was there for my son. And I'm around now. And um, I made a lot of movies after that. And a lot of great things uh, happened after that. So I tell you this not to get you scared. Yeah, no, I tell you this to get you scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to be scared. Because people only learn when they're scared. They don't learn when, uh, when life is great. If you're afraid to suffer, then you know what? You're never going to learn anything. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes God keeps giving you a whisper. Hey, man, you better cut this out. You better, And that's your friends and your kids telling you, Dad, you better quit. Or dad, you got to lose weight. Or mom, you got to lose weight. And then sometimes, you know what? God just gets tired of telling you. And he gets on the computer and he goes, delete. You got to hear when God whispers. When God's whispering to you, you got to hear it. Because if you don't hear it, he starts yelling at you. And then if you don't hear the yelling, then he wipes his hands and walks away. So look at this message to you, whether you're smoking or drinking, alcoholism. Alcohol, they know what it does, inflammation in the body. Also, sitting down. <laughs> Look what I'm doing. I do my podcast. I, I do, uh, sometimes I'll do six or seven in a row. You know, it could be eight hours in a row, but right after I finish a podcast, I get up and I go and I, and I just go on my treadmill or I go on my uh, rebounder and I do it for like two, three minutes, just stretch and then come back and do it again. Also, another thing about longevity, folks, grapeseed oil, any kind of oil, when I say grapeseed, any kind of seed oil, sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, canola oil, um, palm oil, all of those oils, you see them in health foods, don't eat them. Bad for you. Bad. Go online, look it up. I am not a nutritionist. This is what I was told by experts. Okay? Look it up. Olive oil, tremendous. That is good. I take a tablespoon of olive oil every day with a little cayenne pepper. Just a little. Great for you. Olive oil, and buy the good olive oil. Always buy the really good uh, olive oil, you know. Um... It, it just takes a little work. It takes a little work. Don't you want to have quality of your life? Don't you want to live longer? Don't you want to see your kids get older? Because I'm telling you, when that shit hits the fan, I don't know how I got on that story about what happened to me, but I, I guess I don't talk about it too much, but you know what? If it could help someone or scare someone into going to the doctor and getting their shit together, then you should do it. And I could tell you right now, um, my wife, the best. My wife saved me. My wife, my children, of course. Dr. Burke, he's the best. In L.A., he was a genius, a genius, uh, a genius. I, I told him once recently, I said, hey, Doc, I, you know, recently, I think I told him last week because my son went to see him because he had a sinus infection. And I said... Um, Tell Dr. Burke, thank you. I always tell him that for saving my life. And my son told him, and, and Dr. Burke said, uh, God saved him. I just collected the bill. And, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I laughed at that. But uh, guys, I hope uh, uh, I didn't mean to scare anybody. But if you like the show, hit the like button. If you, if you like to subscribe, hit that subscribe button. And uh, John, what do you think, my man? 
I think this episode, we talked a lot about longevity in terms of health and fitness, but what about longevity in terms of leaving a legacy? Because that could also be a way that you can expand your life and, and live on. Yes. I mean, about leaving a legacy, what, in the arts or things like that? In the arts or something like that. But I mean, I think that's something for another episode. I think that's another. I, I, was talk, I talk about that said because uh, I read something where it said, if you want to live forever, then leave something. I forgot the line. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want to live forever, then do something to outlast it. Oh, um, if you want to beat death. To outlast it, yeah. Oh, okay. But you know what? You don't have to be a writer or, or director to make movies. You you want to leave a legacy? Then be a, a good parent, a good, healthy, healthy person. And you want your last years to be quality years. You, you really do, folks. Because one thing about us, no one gets out. We all got to go. Okay? So check yourself out. Make sure you do the right thing with your body. And uh, you know what? Don't forget, if you want to come and see my shows, uh, June 4th, we're at the Richfield Playhouse in Richfield, Connecticut. June 11th, we're at the uh, Paramount Theater in Huntington, New York. Great place. Uh, what is it? The 30th? We're in Dover. No, it's not the 30th. It is June 23rd. Oh, I'm sorry. June 23rd, we're at Dover. Uh, Delaware at the Rollins Casino? Rollins Theater. Rollins Theater. And if you want to go Chaz Palmer Terry, then that, and don't forget, if you're an actor or you, you had to audition, I do a master class. I've been doing it now for 12 years. It sells out really fast. It's one-on-one -on, -one on 27 West 34th Street. I'm going to be doing it the 7th, 8th, and 9th of June. So, hey guys, God bless you all. And uh, I'll see you next week.